Okay, this video is about how to graph the sine and the cosine graph functions and find its amplitude and period. All right, so graph the sine function. We're looking at our unit circle, and we're going to create x and y coordinates for, so for us to graph this curve. Now, our x coordinates are going to be our angle theta, and our y coordinates are going to be the y coordinates on our graph. Okay, so um, let's just look at this. Starting at ang angle 0, what, remember sine is always the y coordinate. So look at the, what's the y coordinate where the angle is 0? Well, it's 0. And then let's just come all the way up here. Pi over 2 is our next angle, next x value. And what's the y coordinate? It's a 1. The next angle we want to look at is at pi. What's the y coordinate? 0. The next angle is down here, 3 pi over 2. Again, what's the y coordinate? Negative 1. And then we come all the way back up to 2 pi. We're going to call it 2 pi this time. And the y coordinate is back to 0. So as we plot these points, we have a, a 1, a negative 1, and 0 are my y values. And we're going to go the full circle all the way out to 2 pi. So we went to uh, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and then 2 pi. Okay, so these are points. We're just going to plot these. At 0, 0, it's here. At pi over 2, it's up at 1. At pi, it's back to 0. 3 pi over 2, it's down at negative 1. And at 2 pi, it's back to 0. Now, this is a cyclical pattern. It will keep going and repeat itself. Okay, what we've done is just re is graph one period of the cycle. Okay, from here on, it's going to go up and then go back down. Kind of like this drawing down here. You can see it goes up, it goes down, and it keeps on going. And what we're focusing on is just the one period where it, it's, it's reached its peak and it's dropped. So as you graph the sine function, there are four key points. These are the key points you need to know. You will get these memorized. You have to have them memorized. So the first one is 0, 0. The second one is at pi over 2, 1. The third one is at pi, 0. Fourth one is at 3 pi over 2, negative 1. And then the last one is at 2 pi, 0. These will come in handy as we do transformations. If you know these five points, transformations won't be so bad. We'll get into this more, but these are the five points you need to focus on today. You need to write them on every problem as you graph them. Now, amplitude. Amplitude is, is the distance from the midline. So at this point, our x-axis is my midline. It's the distance the graph goes up and the distance it goes down. It will be the same. So it's only going one unit up from 0 to 1. That's one unit. The period, it takes 2 pi for the cycle to complete, go up and go down. And then it starts repeating itself. All right, let's think about the domain of this. What's the lowest x value? Well, this we said this goes on forever and ever. So it will go to negative infinity to, and keeps on going in the right-hand direction to positive infinity. Think about your range here. What's the high, lowest y value? I'm sorry. What's the lowest y value it's going to hit? Well, it's down here at negative 1. And it includes negative 1 because it exists there. The highest y value is positive 1, including positive 1 because it exists there. All right, so this is your parent function for sine. Like I said, these are the five key points you need to know. And this is the shape. Remember, sine kind of looks like an S. Now, cosine. We're going to do the similar steps, this time looking at cosine. But remember, cosine of theta is talking about the x-coordinate now. We're going to use the same five angles, 0, pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and at 2 pi. Now we're just looking at x-coordinates. So at 0, my x-coordinate is 1. Pi over 2, my x-coordinate is 0. Pi, x-coordinate is negative 1. 3 pi over 2, x-coordinate is 0. And at 2 pi, my y coordinate is back to 1. Or x coordinate, I'm sorry, is 1. Now we have points to plot. Let's put our. Alright. And again, we go from 1 to negative 1. So if we plot our points, at 0, it's up here. Pi over 2, it's at 0. At pi, it's at negative 1. 3 pi over 2, it's back to 0. And at 2 pi, it's way back up here. So this curve is doing this business. 
kind of looks like a C on its side for cosine. And this would keep on going to infinity, left and right, as you can see. Down here is a graph. It kind of just shows you it keeps on going and keeps on going. And what we're just going to focus on is one period, one cycle. Okay? So our key points, you got five key points because of the five key angles. At zero, our cosine is one. At pi over two, cosine is zero. At pi, our cosine is negative one. At three pi over two, cosine is zero. And at two pi, our cosine is a one. All right, so these are the five key points for cosine. Now you're gonna put this on your pink paper. You're gonna write it down and you're gonna keep it handy all the time so you can get these memorized. All right, amplitude again is the distance from the midline. How far up does it go? Well, it goes up one unit. Or how far down does it go? It's still one unit. The period, how long does it take for the full cycle to make its full curve before it starts repeating, basically? Well, it goes two pi. The domain, what's the lowest x and the highest x values? Well, we said it goes on forever in both directions. So negative infinity to positive infinity. And the range, what's the lowest y value where this exists? Well, negative 1. What's the highest y value? A 1. And it is included because it exists at both those values. So these are your parent functions for cosine and cosine. You should have this filled up on your paper and keep those handy. You need to get this memorized, okay? Now let's look at the equations. I look at specifically definitions, amplitude, vertical stretch and sh shrink. Okay, amplitude is how high does it go from the midline? How high is it going to curve up? And what it goes up, it goes down. That's all amplitude. It's the same thing. So since it's a distance, it's not a negative number. It's just the absolute value of the number. Okay, we'll get into that when we look at the formulas. But amplitude, again, is the distance from the midline up, which is a vertical stretch or maybe a vertical shrink. The period is a horizontal stretch or shrink for one cycle. What normally looks like this could get stretched, or it could be shrunk, squished up. All right, and we'll look at the values that create that. So here's your parent function equation. Y equals A sine of BX. All right, A has to do with amplitude. We said that's the distance from the midline, remember? There's my midline. This is the distance right here. Since it's a distance, we take the absolute value of whatever A is right there. We'll talk about what a negative does later. Right now, we're just looking at the absolute value of A. To find the period, we take this value B, and we're going to divide it by the parent function's period. Parent function period took 2 pi for the full cycle to happen. So if there's a number here besides a 1, you're going to take 2 pi and divide it by that number, and that'll tell you the horizontal stretch or shrink of the graph. And it's the same for cosine. Amplitude and B will determine your period. Okay, so let's look at some problems. So here we go. Example 1, y equals 2 sine of x. All right, I need to find the amplitude. Well, here's my A. A is 2. Well, what's the absolute value of 2? Two? 2. Easy enough. Period has to do with B. And remember, B is this number right here in front of x. If there's nothing there, that means B is 1. You have to calculate the period. So it's 2 pi divided by B. So in this situation, it's 2 pi divided by 1. So my period hasn't changed from the parent function. It's still just 2 pi. Example 2, amplitude. Well, here's A and here's B. To find my amplitude, I take the absolute value of negative 3. Absolute value makes it positive, whatever's inside. So my amplitude is just a 3. Period. You have to take 2 pi and you divide it by B. Well, in this case, my B is a 10. So I reduce and I get pi over 5. That's the period of my graph. That's how long it takes to go the full cycle. All right? We'll graph these tomorrow. Right now, I want you just looking at the values and the equations. Okay, example three. All right, finding the amplitude. Here's A and here's B. Okay, absolute value of A, which is one half. The absolute value of that is one half. Okay, for the period, I have to take two pi and divide it by a fraction. That means you got to do keep it, change it, flip it. Remember this? Two pi over one, change to multiplication, flip the bottom fraction, and reduce. The twos will cancel, and what I have left is a three pi. And that's the new period for my graph. Example four, absolute value of A, again, it's one half, absolute value, that is one half. And then this time, it's pi over four. So B is pi over four. So 
So 2 pi divided by pi over 4. So 2 pi over 1. Keep it. Change the multiplication. Flip it. And pi's cancel, and I'm left with an 8. So my new period is an 8. All right. So for the whisk, I want you to find the amplitude and the period of this problem. Be ready in class with any questions. Thanks and good luck.